Have you heard that you can't build bone after you get a diagnosis of osteoporosis? Well, I am here to tell you that you absolutely can build bone after you get a diagnosis. Today, we're gonna discuss three common osteoporosis myths and what you really need to know to improve your bone health. Hello, my friends. I'm Sarah, and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrated Nutrition. I'm also a 500-hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga, as well as being bone fit certified. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of fractures that happen each year, and I am so glad to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. So let's dive in on the three common myths about osteoporosis. Myth number one, you can't build bone density after getting an osteoporosis diagnosis. This is a common myth that I hear all the time. People say that once you have osteoporosis, you'll always have osteoporosis and that you really can't build bone after you reach peak bone mass. This simply isn't true. We get a new skeleton every seven to 10 years. All the cells in our body are regularly replaced with new ones, and this includes our bone cells. This means that we actually get a new bit of bone every single day, often while we're sleeping, which makes getting quality sleep important for bone health. It also means that lifestyle choices that we make each and every day matter, because what you do today has the potential to impact your bones tomorrow and the day after that and after that on and on. This process of getting new bone cells each day is referred to as the bone remodeling process. And it's different from when we were children and our bones were getting longer and thicker. As adults, our bones tend to replace the cells in a similar pattern to what's already there. This is what leads many people to say, bone can't be built. But the thing is, when we make different lifestyle choices that are different from what we were already doing, then our bodies respond in a different way. Notice all those differences? And it's possible to change the trajectory of our bone health. It takes time, patience, and concentrated effort, but it is possible. And the sooner that we start working on it, the better off we'll be in the long run. Even though it could take up to seven to 10 years to completely reverse osteoporosis, you can see measurable differences in your bones along the way. Your bone mineral density will gradually increase a little bit at a time, one day at a time actually. And it's important to note that not everyone will be able to reverse osteoporosis. Each person's situation is different and there may be some circumstances that make a full reversal out of reach. One example that comes to my mind is that a person has cancer in addition to having osteoporosis. And then that person has to take a medication that keeps the cancer from coming back. And this medication also causes bone loss. In a situation like this, it's more important to stop the cancer from coming back than fully reversing osteoporosis. Being around to enjoy your improved bone health is the goal in this situation. So doing things through lifestyle that reduce the amount of bone loss or even stop bone loss in that situation is what a major win looks like. Individual success looks a bit different for every person, but there are things that every single one of us can do to improve our bone health and to reduce our risk of having fractures. Myth number two, it isn't safe for me to exercise with osteoporosis. The extension of this is if I exercise or lift weights, I could cause a fracture and now I'm fragile. The opposite of this is true. Exercise is actually essential for improving bone health. Not all exercise is appropriate for everyone. And it's critically important to listen to your body and to do what is appropriate for your body. I think that the area of exercise is really easy to misunderstand with osteoporosis. Many people actually have a doctor tell them not to lift anything above three pounds. In truth, there are many things that we should do with our bodies on the exercise front to improve our bone health. We need to work on balance every single day. Balance helps to keep our brain sharp and it improves our reflexes and reduces our risk of having falls and fractures. There's a lot more to balance practice than just standing on one leg. 
Walking is an important part of balance practice. Walking backward actually helps us to walk forwards more easily. When we stand with our feet closer together, we're not as stable as when we stand with our feet hip width apart. Part of balance practice is standing in different ways. Try standing with your feet hip width apart and then stand with them right next to each other. If balance is really challenging for you, then you might try doing this exercise while holding onto your kitchen counter or the back of a really sturdy chair. Another way to practice balance is to walk heel toe, heel toe while looking right in front of you. Strength training is also necessary to improve our bone health. This could look like a lot of different things. The fastest way to improve bone health is to lift as heavy as you're able. And then when that gets easy, you gradually increase the amount of weight that you lift. It's important to note that everyone's heavy is different. It may be that your heavy currently is three pounds and that's totally okay. You can start with that three pounds and when that gets easy, then you gradually increase the amount. This is also not something that works in everyone's body. Maybe you have arthritis like me and it's really hard to grip the weights. On days when my hands hurt less, I still have a go at lifting weights, but it really depends on the day for me. I use my own body weight to build strength. Planking is a wonderful way to do this. And if you don't get down to the floor, you can plank at either the wall or your kitchen counter and get that same weight bearing exercise your body needs. We need to build strength because when we have strong muscles, our muscles pull on our bones. Pulling on our bones stimulates our bodies to reinforce our bones where they're being pulled. This is significant because it's one way that we can change the patterning in our bodies that's been followed for years or even decades with past bone remodeling. We can actively shift how our bodies respond in positive ways. Myth number three, Osteoporosis is a natural part of aging and it only affects older women. Osteoporosis is not a natural part of aging and it affects men and younger men and women and sometimes even children. As we age, we begin to lose muscle mass unless we work at maintaining it. And with that loss of muscle mass, we also lose bone. So it's really important to maintain your muscle mass to maintain your bone health. Women do have increased risk once they reach menopause because they experience a drop in their bone density with the drop in estrogen. This is a normal part, but women who develop osteoporosis have something else besides just normal menopause that contributes to their having significant bone loss. This could be that they had a nutritional deficiency as a child, or maybe as an adult, they've had a lifetime of dieting and they didn't give their bones the nutrients that were necessary for bone health. Maybe someone has a medical condition. There are a myriad of different reasons that contribute to a person developing osteoporosis, but naturally aging increases the risk, but it's not a cause in and of itself. The statistics on fracture when over the age of 50 say that one in three women and one in five men will have an osteoporotic fracture in their lifetime. That means that 20% of men over 50 will also experience an osteoporotic fracture during their life. This is not just a women's disease. Younger people also experience osteoporosis. This may be because they had nutritional deficiencies as children and never reached their peak bone mass. It could also be the result of having a medical condition like celiac disease that makes nutrient absorption more challenging. Developing osteoporosis may also be the result of having had an eating disorder. Osteoporosis affects people at different stages of their life. The important thing to keep in mind about osteoporosis is that there are things we can do to improve our bone health, regardless of the age we are when we get an osteoporosis diagnosis. Understanding the truth about osteoporosis is important for making choices that will help you to actually improve your bone health. It is possible to improve your bone health and possibly even to reverse osteoporosis depending on your situation. There are ways to increase your strength and balance through exercise that will help you to reduce your risk of fracture and to improve your bone health and your quality of life at every age, whether you're able to reverse osteoporosis or not. 
I hope you feel the hope that I feel with regards to bone health. We can make this better and reduce our fracture risk. If you found this video helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And I look forward to talking with you soon.